Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video and today we're going to be looking at how to set up the PS2 emulator on our Steam Deck. I'll be showing you where to copy those bio files, what kind of game files we need in order to play them on the Steam Deck, and going through all the settings so you have the best resolution, going through the best frame rates, and everything that you need so you can play all of your favorite PS2 games on your Steam Deck. So, let's get into it. So let's begin by understanding what kind of emulator we will be using for the Steam Deck and how it actually works. So the first thing to know is that there's no jailbreaking required to install the PS2 emulator on your Steam Deck and start playing the PS2 games right away. You simply just have to install the emulator, add your BIOS, copy all your games over to the correct folder, and you're all done. So the emulator we're looking at is called the PCSX2. It's an open source PS2 emulator and it supports over 2,600 games from the PS2 library. Now, the great thing about this emulator is that we have the custom resolutions and upscaling, virtual and shareable memory cards, save states, patching system, internal recorder to achieve lossless quality at full speed. So I've been using this emulator on my Steam Deck for the past weekend, and I've just been having a blast. All of these games are running smoothly, uh, with the upscale resolution, it looks great. And I'm so happy that I finally got this set up on my Steam Deck. Now, the best way to set up this emulator is through an application called Emu Deck. It will install all sorts of emulators, including the PS2 emulator on your Steam Deck. Now, I'm assuming you'll be running other emulators on your Steam Deck and not just the PS2. So I recommend going through here getting all the emulators you'd like to get set up with, and we'll go through that process here right now. Switch over to desktop mode by pressing the Steam button, head down to power, press A, and select switch to desktop mode. Let's begin by downloading the Firefox app and installing it on your device if you haven't already. Once that's finished, open up the browser and search for Emo Deck. Click on your first link. Then click on download at the top. Next, select the Steam option. Find the downloaded file and run it to install Emu Deck. Once it's finished installing, follow the app to successfully install all of the emulators you would like to have on your device. This is a very easy to follow process and it will take some time. I recommend having an SD card installed on your device to avoid using your main system's memory. You can easily buy a 512 gigabyte card cheap nowadays to keep all of your games on it. I have been using a one terabyte card and I hardly have any issues with it. Hey guys, before we go any further, just want to let you know that I did launch my website and on there you'll find all sorts of different things uh, that's related to the content here on the channel and mostly and mainly the merch that I'd like to sell. So I did find my PSP Memory Stick Pro Dual custom cards that a lot of you have been asking for, and they're finally available. They were sold through Etsy, but I was having a hard time finding my stash, and I finally found it, and now I'm ready to sell them. And orders will be processed within 24 hours. I'll also have some services available because I do have a lot of messages uh, through Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, asking if I offer any type of services for PSP housing replacement, uh, Steam Deck SD card setups, and things like that. So those services are now available on the website. And obviously, you will have to send me your PSP, for example, if you want the full housing uh, replacement. So you'll have to provide me the console and the housing, and I'll get it together for you and send it back your way. And usually that takes around 24 to 48 hours of a turnaround once I receive uh, the product. I'll also have my custom made lanyards that I have made years ago. Uh, a lot of people have been also interested in those. They were specifically made for the PSP, but you can obviously use it for whatever, like the PS Vita, um, on your keychain, things like that. So, so yeah guys, please go check it out. There's still a lot of work to be done, but for the most part I have it set up. 
So let me know in the comment section if you checked it out and how I did on it. Now as far as the BIOS files go, I cannot show you exactly where to get them, but in the comment section down below, I'll have some direction as to where to find those BIOS files. So once you have acquired all of your BIOS files, it will be a total of 14 files. Uh, you want to make sure that you copy it into the correct folder. So using your USB adapter or however you're going to do it, I typically use a USB adapter like this, plug in my USB drive and we're good to go. So let's open up our storage and under emulation, we'll find all of these different folders and under BIOS is where we're going to paste all 14 of those files. Uh, you don't need to throw it into the PCSX2 folder, uh, any subfolder like that it will create issues and you won't be able to run your game. So once you paste that in there, you should be good to go. Let's hit X and let's go back to the emu deck application. Let's go in here. And what I love about this application is that it has the BIOS checker. So let's check the BIOS checker. And it's searching for the PlayStation 2 BIOS, and we already have a green check mark there. And we are good to go. You can see that there, BIOS, PlayStation 2 BIOS detected. Once you have that all greened out and set up, you can now copy your games over to your Steam Deck. Let's go back to our storage device. And under emulation, let's remove this under ROMs and find the folder that has the name PS2. Pretty simple, right? But yeah, PS2 is going to be the folder where we're going to copy all of our PS2 games. So open that up and dump all of your games in here. Now as far as the files go, they should be under .iso. And those are the files that I have and are working for me on the Steam Deck. And that should be a simple, quick and easy way to dump your games into the PS2 folder. And once you completed that, we can now go back to the gaming mode where we're going to go over all the settings and how to get the box arts for your games. All right, so here we are in Emulation Station and pressing start will bring us to the main menu and under scrapers where we're going to download our art covers, box covers, videos and things like that. So under scrape the systems, go down and find the PlayStation 2. Sony PlayStation 2, make sure you select that. And under content settings, Make sure all of this is checked off and under other settings we want to make sure that we are searching using file hashes non interactive mode search using metadata names and disabling interactive mode so that way it will update automatically and it won't be asking you any questions and you can just sit back let it start scanning for your folders and you'll get something like this. So typically if you don't have it scanned, you won't have any of this information or video, box art, uh, wallpapers and things like that. It will look something like this where you don't see any content whatsoever, just the title of the game. So make sure you scrape all of your games and that way you have these beautiful artwork set up. And what's great is that all of the artwork that you download can be repurposed through the other themes that you may have. I have so many different themes and they will just go together. It's very easy, you just have to change your theme and once you scraped your uh, your games, you don't have to really redo it. So you can see there that I have a different theme. And we still have the artwork. And when I can change it to whatever I like to under 
the variant, but this one doesn't have a variant. Anyways, let's get into now the settings of our game. Let's go to Crash Bandicoot since this is an easy to go into game. Okay, so here we are in Crash Bandicoot and right away you'll notice the status bars on the very top and bottom. At the top we have our system, settings, view, tools, help, and all that good stuff. We have our cursor. At the bottom we have the resolution and the frame rates. So we're going to adjust all that so our PS2 game experience is a lot nicer and smoother. Although we are running on 60 frames, let's go into the quick settings of the Steam Deck and make sure that disable frame limit is disabled and frame limit is up to 90 frames. But this game is running at 60 frames, no problem. Now, there is a quick way to close out this game by pressing the menu button and also the view button at the very top or as I call it the select and start button. So pressing these two together will get us back into emulation station and we can select another game that we'd like to play. But I'll relaunch this and I'll go into my quick settings here by pressing the view or select button and the right joystick down together and we have a quick menu. Let's load up our state. There we are. And let's do that one more time. Here we can toggle the frame limit, load state, save state, game properties, achievements, save screenshot, switch to software renderer, change disk, settings, and close out game. At the bottom we have the information of the game that we're playing. So that is a nice little menu we have there. Let's go down to settings. And across the top here you'll see different icons. The first one we're looking at is the interface settings. This is the bio settings, emulation settings, graphic settings, audio settings, memory card settings, controller settings, hotkey settings, achievement settings, folder settings, and the advanced settings. Go back to the interface settings and under game display, we are going to hide the cursor in full screen. Let's enable that and let's also enable start full screen. So that way we don't see those bars on the very top and bottom. But if you'd like to see that, then you can just leave it off, I guess. Under on screen display, we can show our speeds, our frame rates, our CPU usage and our GPU usage and all sorts of different things to show up on the screen. So let's go back and see where we're at. And now we have all this information at the very top. I'm going to go back into our settings and disable all of this because I do like the simplified version of the Steam Deck. Going under our quick settings, you can change the performance overlay level. And I prefer this one because that will always stay at the very top for all of my games instead of using the emulator. So if you didn't know that, there you go. Now let's get into the good stuff and we're going to be changing our graphic settings. So under graphic settings, there are a few things we have to change. Uh, let's go down to enable widescreen patches. So a lot of the PS2 games did come with the widescreen patch and we can enable that for our games. The internal resolution and I wouldn't go more than the native 1080p. That's going to be the best one to use for most of your games and it's gonna look very crispy. Next, under the anisotropic filtering, we're gonna go 8x and go down to the FXAA under post-processing, enable that. And we're also going to enable our shade boost and this is going to enable brightness, contrast, saturation adjustments. So we can go in here and adjust and boost our contrasts and saturations to your liking. And I'll hit this. Let's see if we can hit this here. I'll do 65. 
Now that would be it for our graphic settings. Now if you're looking to enable cheats, go under emulation settings and enable cheats there. So it's a nice little menu that we have and it shows us all sorts of things that we can manipulate for our games. And one of the biggest things for me is the retro achievements. So all these old school games do have achievements for the most part and you can enable those achievements and sign into your account. And you'll have to log in at the very bottom with account. This already has a huge change to it. It looks really good. So let's sign out of here or close out the game and restart it. And all of our settings should come up. And when you're logged into Retro Achievements, you will have these little pop-ups letting you know that this game does have achievements or not. Let's press that and let's load our state. And there we go. Now we don't have the cursor or the, uh, the bar showing at the top and bottom, which is nice. But if you double click on your scrolling pad here, it will bring up those menus and double clicking it again will disable it. So if you would like to have those up, you can do that. There we go. It's a little finicky, but you get the point. So here is Crash for the PS2 and it looks great. Look at that. And I was playing Bloody Roar 3 earlier and it looked awesome. I was very happy with the uh, with the way that it was performing on the Steam Deck. And I absolutely love it. And I finally have PS2 games running on this guy. And those settings that you did change should work for the rest of your games. You don't have to go in and continue to update those settings for each one. That should be a universal change for all of your games. So that is it for this one, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more guides like this in the future. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.